You know, a wise person told me that when life give you lemons, make lemonade. My love don't cause a thing. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. All right, y'all, it's story time. So in today's story, we gonna talk about, let's name him James and his girl Mariah. James and Mariah got together just on some random, you know, I met a girl out in the world and we just been hanging and realized that they were both very smart and scamming. And they was killing the game. It was like, at first it was just little by little just to see if they can get away with it. But over time they realized, hey, we got something here. We could keep this up. And they were doing so good that they wasn't even noticing that a lot of people was getting caught up with that scam and stuff. But they didn't care because they was riding a high horse. They was making money. They just like, no, we out here. We doing this. We doing it too good. We ain't on nobody radar. So let's just keep this going. They ended up putting up money and saving money. And they were smart, unlike other scammers who was out here trying to show out and be hood rich and posting their money on Facebook and all over these social media sites. They wasn't doing that. They were still walking around regular, put, saving money, talking about where they're going to put it to invest or how can we flip it to make more. So they at first wasn't on the radar until over time, they just was making so much money that it caught eye of the FBI. Now, here we are, fast forward. Now, James is getting called in. They already got enough on him for scamming, but they got stuff on Mariah too. But he took the blame. She ain't had nothing to do with it. She ain't know nothing about it. She works a legal job. Don't put this on her. I'm going to take this, put it all on me. So before he gets locked up, he makes sure that he talks to Mariah, get his affairs in order. Here's all the money. This is where the stash spot said. This is where we got to save. You hold this. You hold me down while I do this time. They giving me four to 20 good behavior, possibly early release. I just need you to just hold me down. Keep money on my books. Put it up so when I get out, I have something and we still going to be good. She understood this. She got this. Now it's time for him to go in. He's in. Everything is going good. For the first two and a half years, like clockwork, on the phones, sending back letters, money on his books for commissary. She's just doing everything she's supposed to. She holding him down. He has no reason to question her. He has no reason to feel like his money is in jeopardy. She's sleeping around. Even if she was, he like, shoot, I can't do nothing. I can't please her. I just... You know, when we get out, we can just, when I get out, we can leave off where we, you know, left off or whatever. Just hope she don't get pregnant or get no STD she can't get rid of type stuff. That's his mindset because he grown and he ain't stupid. He knows she out here probably doing her. But long as she answered that phone when I call, that money on them books and that commissary and she returned them letters, I ain't go trip. So... A lot of people been getting picked up for scamming, for this, for that, whatever. And they started um, talking about early releases. And he like, well, I've been in here about a good two and a half years. I might possibly be on that list. And it just so happened because his case wasn't as extreme as the other cases. He was on that list. So he was like, oh, man, this would be perfect if I just surprise her. I'm not even going to tell her I'm getting early released. I'm just going to, you know, show up at the house, you know, probably go grab some flowers or something, set up something with my mama so we can have a room ready. He just had this whole miraculous plan to just just treat her to this beautiful day when he get his early release because she been holding him down for this two and a half years. So now it's two months before his early release date. And he started noticing she been slacking, like his commissary getting low, and it ain't never been low. You know what I'm saying? She she ain't been answering the phone like she used to. Like if he was used to routine clockwork on the hour, whatever, or even if it ain't on the hour on that day, half of the time she wasn't even picking up the phone no more. And he like, she got a dude. She got to have a dude. Like, I know she was going to be out here doing her thing. But, I mean, come on now. We a team. We we got this. Like, what's going on? She ain't answering the phones. She ain't. She slacking on 
putting money on my books, my commissary. I ain't had a letter in about two months. What is going on? So he like, I can't get my mind there. I can't get depressed up in here. This place is depressing as it is. I ain't even gonna worry about it. Maybe it's something deep. He talking to his mama. His mama ain't telling him nothing. Talking to his friends. They ain't telling him nothing. So he just think that she just is ghosting him or she got a dude and she like forget him or whatever. So now two, uh, two months has passed and it's time for him to get the early release. His mindset is still to surprise her. So the first thing he do when he gets out is he goes to the house that they was sharing together just to find out that she don't even stay there no more. Like the house is put up for sale. And he like, what? Like, how is the house even? What? We we had all this money. She she could have took care of this. She was supposed to take care of this. This was her job. Somebody else is living in a house, basically. He like, okay, what am I supposed to do? So he goes to all his old spots, all the places he used to hang out, all the places his friends stay. And he asking them, have you seen Mariah? Like, anybody seen Mariah? And they like, yeah, Mariah, she always be on the corner, yada, yada, and blah, blah, blah. He like, on the corner, yada, yada. What, what's that supposed to mean? He like, dude, you ain't going to believe it unless you go over there. And he like... Okay, so is she staying around the corner or something? Like, did she move? She she put this house up for sale, let somebody else get it, and now she got something better? Because all his mind is thinking is, we had a lot of money. We have a lot of money. Ain't no way we don't have this house no more. She had to upgrade and got something better for when I get out, so we go be straight. Because that's what's the job she's supposed to do. He goes around the corner. He, he driving, he driving, he driving. He don't see her. He's stopping in the stores. Have anybody seen Mariah? Anybody seen Mariah? Yeah, she um at the street, yada, 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 yada. He like, okay, so he wasn't at the, she wasn't at the streets. His friends was telling him. He goes to the street that the dude at the store tell him or whatever, and then he sees her. But when he see her, like, he can't even speak. He, he just in, like, shock because she looks so down bad. And he like... What? Like, no, nah, that ain't my Mariah. That ain't my baby. And he just got sad. Like, what's going on? His first mind was thinking that she was cheating on him or not even necessarily cheating on him. She had a dude she fell in love with or something. And then they telling her, telling him that she on the streets or whatever. So prostitution came in his mind. Can you say prostitution? But. Don't do that again. Sorry. <laughs> but it wasn't even that. She was like, looked like she was strung out on drugs. He slowly rolled up on her. He like, Mariah, Mariah, baby. She she look at him and she's shocked because she didn't even know that he had early release. And she like, oh, oh, oh my God, baby. Hey, how you doing? You know, twitching and scratching and stuff. And he like, what happened? What happened? Uh, uh, yeah, I, I messed up. I, I know I messed up. I messed up. I know. And he like, you know what? I can't even, I can't even get into all that. I just got to ask you, Mariah, where's the money? Where's our money, Mariah? Where Where's the money, baby, that we put up? Please tell me you put it up. You got it in a safety deposit box somewhere. You got somebody holding it, baby. Where's the money? I, we, we don't got no more money, baby. I messed up. It's all gone, baby. It's all gone. I messed up. He like, how? what do you mean it's all gone? We had so much money. Where's the money, Mariah? Please don't play with me right now, honey. This is the only thing I had to my name. Where's the money, honey? She's like, we don't got no more you know, within that two and a half years, you was locked up. You know, I was partying and I was testing this and testing that. And somebody, somebody slipped something and something. And I, I just, over the last two or three months, I just got hooked, baby. And I just was selling stuff. That's how we lost the house. And I just, over time, I was, the money's gone. I don't know what to tell you. The money's gone. Y'all, the moral of this story is, regardless of how you got your money if you know that you possibly is doing something that you can end up in jail for i'm not saying you can't trust your girl i'm not saying you can't trust your family but make sure that your finances is in order whether you get a safety deposit box whether you get a bank account only you have access to and you know somebody you can wholeheartedly trust access it and keep it good but make sure your affairs in order so you don't, <clears throat> excuse me, so you don't be like this brother. Just getting out and ain't got nothing to his name. And with that, I'm out. Hey, I'm Dante. 
If you enjoyed this story time, make sure you hit that like button, share the video. And if you are not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe. If you want me to promote your business or your social media channels, email me at the Dante Show 88 at yahoo.com. I charge $50 per video. Don't forget y'all, I go live every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again.